Ten years from now, this might be a park you would like walking in. This is what plant synthetic biology can do for you. You have plant cells growing in these light harvesting sculptures, and they are producing foods, food ingredients, drugs, medicinal drugs, and biopolymers, what you can dream of. This is not the situation right now. Now we get most of our products from petrochemicals. This is not sustainable. Solar power energy is a clear alternative, very powerful. Plants and algae knows how to use solar energy. They grow from it, and they are the world champions doing organic chemistry. They can actually make all the materials we need. Are we on the right track? Van Gogh was very concerned about nature, respected nature, and he called the sun the good God sun. But he also saw that humanity was focusing too much on monocultures, not taking proper advantage of biodiversity. So he challenged our views, and he's right. If you look at the painting from Rousseau called The Dream, you have a woman in a forest. She's surrounded by an abundant nature, providing the foods, the medicinal compounds she needs, and biomaterials to build a shed. So we should move towards that and use those, those resources in our future. Nature is in one way both simple and highly complex, as illustrated by these ice crystals. Nature uses combination of modules to make complex chemistry, the compounds and materials we need. Using synthetic biology, we can favor, we can use that technique. We can, we can combine these modules in new ways, put them into a new connections to generate new products. This could be polymers, it could be colorants, fragrances, it could be medicinal drugs. We are actually focusing on making highly complex medicinal drugs, which you otherwise would not be able to afford. And these are all diterpenoids with highly complex stru structures. How does nature use modules? Well, it's the same way as we use modules in the electronic industry. You can use the same modules to, buy, to build a racing car, taking a man from one point to another at a very fast speed, with actually without any sense. Or you can build a bus which enables people to talk and maybe discuss how to make a better future. In plant cells, you have many different modules. The, chlor, the chloroplast module is where the sun energy is harvested. The chloroplast sends energy to specific production modules. Many of those exist in the plant, where defense compounds or other molecules the plant needs are produced. So it's only produced when the plants need the molecules. What we have achieved with synthetic, uh, synthetic biology now is to move those modules doing complex synthesis into the chloroplast. That's where the energy is plentiful. So there's no restriction in how much the plant material can make. So we get more products and we get it all the time. So this is the advantage of synthetic biology. We see the production units like these. We have uh, algae cathedrals or plant cell cathedrals where we grow the plant cells for, uh, there, and they are fueled just by solar energy and by carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Is this is going to substitute the petrochemical industries we have so much of today. This is, requires a lot of things to be implemented. Interdisciplinary research and communication with the general public, because synthetic biology also involves the use of genetic engineering, a very controversial uh, technology. So a lot of communication, collaboration with biohackers and so on have to be instigated to make sure we get the public goods out of this technology. This is not a specific issue for scientists. Already in 1888, uh, Gauguin had a discussion uh, with, with uh, Van Gogh about nature. Um, uh, he wrote an essay called Notes Synthetic. You were able to synthesize nature because Gauguin thought nature was composed of parts which you could move around in your painting to get the right composition. If today you ask a person to make a, 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 a mermaid genetic engineered, she would look like that, not like a, 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 a normal or sort of a traditional mermaid, although they're both transgenic. We have a tendency to mirror ourselves in old, old times where we thought everything was good, but we have huge challenges in front of us global challenges which we need to address also using modern technologies. Wouldn't it be nice if in 10 years from now you were living in a house like this, surrounded by an algae farm where you could get many of your products for, which for your daily uh, living. So the general public expects from researchers that we are addressing all these issues, that we are pr providing sustainable solutions to give a better future. 
And I think we should take this very serious as researchers to live up to those expectations. The interaction between biology and technology is going to have opened very many new opportunities, unique opportunities, and we just need to use those right. <laughs>